Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In today's lesson, we're going to talk a little guitar slim. This is um, taken from his recording of the things I used to do from way back in the day. It is a blues in F. Uh, and what I've done is I've transcribed basically the first 12 bars. The second 12 bars is another vocal verse. It's almost identical. And then the solo comes along and he uses a lot of the same notes. So I've just transcribed the first 12, just enough to kind of give you something to have some fun with. I didn't want to make this a huge giant thing, but there's a lot of cool ideas in here. Two rhythmic things that I really want to point out to you, and then one as far as note choice. So let's jump right into it first. Now, first off, we're in the key of F. There's a little bit of a pickup. <laughs> Now, in the Stevie Ray Vaughan recording, he does that as a sharp five. Uh, in this case, at least I think it's a sharp five, which is more like that. Hearing this recording, I definitely hear that C7. So one and a two and a three and a four. And then we come to that F7. Now, I programmed my little jam track to give me sort of a bass line, and I'll show you what I did there. I used, since it's F, I used the root, the third, which is the A, so the F, the A at the fifth fret, the C at the third fret of the fifth string, and then, so that's one and uh, two and uh, three and, uh, and then four and, uh, that's the D, the C, and the A. So it's root, third, fifth, sixth, fifth, third. And that's my little bass line. Right? And then the next chord is going to be a B flat seven. So I'll do the same riff, just starting on B flat. B flat, D, F, G, F, D. Okay? So that's how I'm getting that little bass line in there. And I did that because I don't hear any guitar playing chords in this section. The only thing that you hear are the fills. Okay, so this first one, and it's it's kind of a bright tone. On the, uh, on the album cover, it's a Les Paul with P90s. I kind of thought the telly gave the sound. Uh, this is sort of the closest. I'm using the, um, the, the bridge position pickup. I've got it wide open with a little bit of overdrive kind of a fendery sound here, so that's kind of where I'm getting that tone. It's my uh, 11 rack on a super reverb cranked up a little bit, and that's where I'm getting that. So we're going to just go through, that's the first to the third fret, a little quick uh, grace note uh, on the second string. So notice, and then that's the F, G, F, F. So notice that's all out of good old F major. Good old box two right there, right? So that's kind of what we'd expect. Now the tuning might be a little bit off. It's an old recording. Uh, he might have played it with a capo. Uh, could have played it in E with a capo. Could be an F sharp and everything's tuned down a half step. I have no way to know, but that's the closest to standard tuning that I got. All right, then we go. So that's our F7. Second measure is a B7. Notice I've got a big fat rest. Well, that's because nothing goes on as far as the guitar chair is concerned. There's vocal going on there. There's all that kind of stuff. If you wanted, yeah, maybe strum a B flat seven, right? Then it comes going to come back to the F again, and we're going to have, 
and we have our first cool rhythmic thing. So notice, I'm starting right, right out of good old box two. One of my favorite licks ever. So we're starting with that little um, A sharp to, to B flat, uh, yeah, sorry, G sharp to A. First, second fret on the third string, C, D. Then we're gonna slide up to the A from the G, third to the fifth fret on the top string. Okay, and that's one and uh, two and uh, three and duh. Okay, now notice we're counting one and uh, two and uh, because this is 12-8 time. 12-8 is counted as four groups of three. Anytime you can take the, the top number of your time signature and divide it by three, you should. That's what it, that's how it's supposed to work. So this is Ben counting one and uh, two and uh, three and, uh, but notice that the last, we have four notes, four 16th notes with a four underneath. That means we're gonna do straight 16th notes there. So we're gonna go one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four E and uh. So you're kind of going back and forth between a straight 16th and triplets. Right, then it's gonna go on a little bit. And, and remember this because we're gonna revisit this idea a lot. All right, and then still on F. And we have a nice little, again, the same thing. F, A, C, D, F, right out of box two. F, G, F, D, F. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and duh. Uh. Okay, and everything that we've done so far is basically going to come back. All three of those little phrases. And that when you just kind of cram in there, um, I wrote it as, as 16th notes. Really, it just happens fast. Okay, uh, and that, uh, sorry, and the second line there, that's gonna come back again. And this is gonna come back again, okay? So keep that in mind. All of those three things are gonna just keep coming back. So then we have the B7, B flat seven chord comes along. Again, just kind of a flurry, very similar to what we did before, right? But we added a note. But it's basically the same thing. Then we have an empty bar because there's just singing going on, no guitar. Then we come back and, oh look, same lick. Okay, this time he plays three triplets on the A, but it's the same lick. Two and a three and a four E and a one and a two and a three and a four. Ends it on a C, but other than that, it's the same lick. Again, <laughs> it's the same idea. There's the C. Again, we have that little flurry. This time it's not really a grace note at the beginning, but it's totally the same idea. C, D, F, G, F. B flat, nothing because there's vocal going on. Back to the F and oh look, here we are again. Same thing. Now this last one ends right, right there on the C. F, A, C, D, C. What's interesting is that he pl this last lick totally gives the impression that you're going to the five chord in the last beat, but the bass does not. Nothing seems to go to the five chord. So we don't know, you know, maybe he thought the band was gonna go to the five chord and they didn't. Maybe he's trying to tell them to and they just didn't listen. We have no way to know. And that's it, you know, that's really it. Um, again, we don't know exactly what key, we weren't there, <laughs> right? But I'm making, you know, so I'm making some educated guesses. I'm making some, you know, it's, it seems, it sounds like it's in the key of F. Back in the day, they didn't have electronic tuners, they just tuned to whatever piano was in the studio. Maybe that piano was tuned a little sharp and everybody's really playing in an E and it just kind of sounds like F. Maybe he put a capo on it, 
I don't know, and it doesn't really matter. The reality is that nothing would really change. One key to another on a guitar very rarely changes anything much. The only difference may be that you're going to an open string instead of maybe, maybe it's that. We don't know. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter that much. So let me do this. Um, hopefully you can kind of see. Uh, what, what I thought was really neat about this and, and what I wanted to point out is his use of this. And effectively, you know, we, we talk often about using the major sound over the one chord and the minor sound over the four chord, but he didn't. You'll notice that over the four chord, he still used those same four notes, but you'll also notice that he never hit that. He never hit that A because over a B flat chord, that A would really clash with the A flat in the chord. Okay, so these two notes from the major sound are perfectly good over every chord, but this one here is not. And you'll notice the only time that he plays an A is when the F chord is going on, and it never, ever, ever happens when the B flat or the C are going on. So you can, you can use that major blues sound over the four and five chords. At least you can use part of it. You can use that much of it, but you can't, as soon as you get to there, it's not gonna work over the four and five. He was very, very aware of that, obviously, because he was clearly very careful to not ever hit it. <laughs> maybe he knew why, maybe he didn't. Maybe he just knew that it sounded bad. Who knows? doesn't really matter. He was clearly very careful not to use it over the four and the five chord. You should do the same thing. So let's play through the whole thing. I'm going to count it through just so you can, just so you can be sure to know exactly where everything falls and pay attention to when I do the triplets versus the straight time counting. Now, if you want to practice on that, set a metronome, assuming that you can count this fairly comfortably, already without the metronome, turn on a metronome and that will help you keep the pulse the same regardless of how you count it. And I have other videos that talk about that, so I'm not going to get too far into it today. But let me count you through the whole thing. Here we go. One and a two and a three and a four and a one. Two, two a three and a four and a one and two. Three, uh, four, and one, and uh, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a Three and a four E and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. A two, a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four E and a one and a two and a three and a four and uh. So there you go. That's how it goes. So you can count the whole thing down. Make sure you can kind of do it. The flurries are probably the hardest part. Um, and if you if you want, you can you can play those two notes per beat and it'll keep it like uh, four. If I if I put that over a beat, four and uh, four, there's one, four, and then because remember the grace note counts as one. So four and da, four and da, or four and da, four and da, four and da, or four and da. There's three different spots where that little sort of flurry happens on the last beat. So if you can, the grace note happens on one count. If you do two notes in one count, then two notes in the next count, that'll always work out. 
Okay, so let me play it one more time over my jam track. Hope you dug the lesson. If you want to play it along with me, please do, as always. If you think you have a friend that would like this video, please feel free to share it with them. Again, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Here we go. Two, three, and a four, and a one. Two, the three, and a one. Two, a three, and a four, and a one. Uh. 